Welcome to our video devotionals for the week of March the 27th. Today is Monday, March the 27th, and we're concluding this week our discussion of peace with God. One cannot finish a discussion of peace with God without talking about peace with others. In some ways, I believe that peace with others is extremely more important than some of the other issues that we, we tend to spend so much time on in this planet. Part of that's due to the fact that the, in the infiniteness of God and the finiteness of man, we tend to not forgive other people and we tend not to have peace with people where we might tend to have peace with God. Men tend to hold grudges, not forget wrongs that are done to them. And, and then they stew over issues for hours, days, months, and sometimes years. God forgives instantly, takes the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, and places it over your sin. And God is fresh and ready to go forward when you and I confess and repent. So we're going to talk about peace with others this week. And we're going to begin today uh, talking about peacemakers versus peacekeepers. The most interesting fact about the word peacekeeper is that it's directly related to Jesus Christ of whom the angels declared peace on earth, goodwill to men. Jesus is the one who establishes peace in our hearts and places us in a relationship of peace with our creator. This is not about people who think, talk, dream, and scheme for peace in our world. It is about those who are makers of peace in our world. What is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is not an appeaser. Peacemakers are not always examining things from a self-centered point of view, asking questions like, is this fair to me? How will this benefit me? In James 3.17, we have some assistance with the definition of peacemaker. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Here it is, first of all, peaceable. A peacemaker is peaceable. When we pray the, the Lord's Prayer and ask the kingdom of God to come, we are calling into our lives righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The peacemakers pass first through the peace of God, which comes only through the blood of Jesus Christ. The peacemaker must have peace himself. He receives this from God. Didn't Jesus say in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. A peacemaker is long-suffering, forgiving, and consider it. Peacemakers love their enemies. Peacemakers are always looking for right relationship between themselves and others. We must comment that we have plenty of troublemakers in our world, including Satan. We even have Christians who, for some reason, think God has called them to the sword. They're always stirring up things, adding fuel to the fire, throwing on one more word of gossip, motor mouthing, loud mouthing, criticizing. A peacemaker is called to an active, aggressive program with pureness of mind and heart. He is striving to follow peace with all men, yet actively involving himself in opportunities to make sure peace will last and be real. He is the Christian who is not afraid to interfere in his world for its betterment. A peacemaker is not a peacekeeper. The difference is simply the peacekeeper tends to compromise at every turn, including principles to die for, because the object is not making peace, it's keeping peace. Peacemakers do just that. They make peace. They understand that true peace is based simply on a relationship with the eternal God, who's the author of peace. Anything authored in peace outside of a relationship with God is superficial. It's not really going to be real. It's not going to last. Hence, all the treaties of men. Just think about this. All the treaties of men have been broken concerning peace because they are aimed at keeping peace, not making peace. Digging down in to the core root of this problem and 
and making peace. General Lee was criticized by General Whiting. Some expected Lee to get even. President Davis calls General Lee in and asks him what he thinks of Whiting. General Lee commended him and called him one of the noblest of the Confederacy. An officer present heard this, called General Lee to the side, and asked Lee if he knew what Whiting had said of him. Yes, Lee replied. I know what he said. And the officer said to Lee, well, why did you respond to President Davis like you did? And Lee answered, the president desired to know my opinion of Whiting, not Whiting's opinion of me. This surely is the magnanimous spirit of the peacemakers. Peacemakers are sowers of peace. The result of being peacemakers, they are called the children of God. This means we are partakers of the nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These children are filled with God. They are godlike in reactions and actions. They shall be named, the Word of God says. That word means they shall be owned. They shall be owned by God. The peacemaker's character is owned by God because the peacemaker is like the Father. Peacemakers are like reflectors reproducers of the Prince of Peace and truly children of the God of Peace. The road to reconciliation is to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. Only a new man in Christ can live the life described in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Only Christ can make peacemakers who are truly children of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help us to be peacemakers, that we do everything to remain pure and upright and magnanimous in our spirit, reflecting Jesus in our character and our actions. And I give you glory for helping us today. Make peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God's grace and peace over you today.